You know, there's a lot of people today that say they love God. Well, what would you say if Jesus was to ask you, do you love me? Well, today on Daily Renewal, we're going to talk about what it means to love God. Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Lyle, and welcome to Daily Renewal. If this is your first time with us, I'm just going to ask if you would consider uh, subscribing to our channel uh, and hitting that like button below, and that will give you access to over a 100 different programs that are all designed to help you with your Christian walk. Well, today we want to tackle the question, what does it mean to love God? Now, when we look at that word love, it is amazing how in the English language, we love a lot of things, and yet we love them in different levels. For example, if you were to tell your wife that you love her, and you were also to tell her that you love fishing, if she was to probe a little deeper uh, and, and try to find out whether you love her more than fishing, you better hope that they're not on the same plane. You know, we love a lot of things. We love our favorite sports teams. We, we may love chocolate. And you know, when we look at the idea of loving God, it is my hope for you that your love for chocolate isn't ever anywhere close to the same level as your love for God. So let's tackle this a little bit today. We've been looking at the book of John, uh, John 21 in particular, and this is a time where uh, the apostles, Jesus has already died and gone to the cross and he's resurrected and he's actually had a, a time period before his ascension to be with the Father where he's seen by the, the uh, disciples a couple times. And at this particular part of the story, and I encourage you to go back to some of our previous episodes and, and look at some of the dynamics that were happening at this time period. After following Jesus for three years, there's a lot of upheaval. There's a lot of, uh, of, of um, confusion going on in the disciples. And we see here that Peter, uh, one of the main disciples, is out fishing. And all of a sudden, Jesus is on shore. He asks them if they've caught anything. They say no. And he tells them to put their nets down on the right side of the boat. They catch fish. And they immediately understand that it's the Lord. Well, Peter jumps off the boat and he comes to shore and has breakfast with them. But the interesting part about this particular breakfast is we have to back up. And for those that don't know the story, Peter was somebody who on the night that Jesus was going to be betrayed, he said to the disciples, you guys are going to betray me. And Peter stood up and said, no, everybody else will betray you, but I will not betray you. And Jesus broke the news to him. He says, Peter, you're not only going to betray me, but tonight you're going to betray me three times. And it happened exactly the way Jesus said it would happen. Imagine being somebody that thought, you know what? If anybody's going to stand up for my friend Jesus, it's me. Only to find out that when, when push came to shove, when, when it really came down to the, to the tough decision, not only did he fail, but it was actually a, a, even a little girl who confronted him. And he claimed not even to know who Jesus was. And he found himself on the outside. Now, I think we've all been in positions where, you know what, we, we've, we've maybe done something wrong in a relationship or we've had somebody else done something wrong uh, in relationship and then all of a sudden we find ourselves in a place where maybe we're in close proximity and there's that awkward moment. What are we going to say? What are they going to say? How, how are we supposed to get through this? Well, this was one of those moments even though Peter still loved Jesus, they had never actually talked uh, about the fact that Peter had failed miserably in their relationship with one another. It wasn't Jesus who failed, it was Peter. And there hadn't been any kind of restoration of any kind between Peter and Jesus. So it was awkward. And we pick up the story uh, in verse 15 of chapter 21, and this is what happens after they'd eaten breakfast. It says, So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, 
Do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. I'm going to stop right there for a moment because this is where we're about to see that there is different levels in our relationship when it comes to saying that we love something or someone. Now, in the Greek, which was, uh, we have to understand that the, the New Testament, we have to look back to the Greek. It wasn't written in English. Now, just like in many languages, when we look at some words, some words that we have in English, they might have, uh, they say one thing, and love is one, is one of these words, where there's more meaning to it when we look back in the Greek. And this is where there becomes a problem. Now, when we speak uh, of love in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, there's actually three words for it in Greek. The first one uh, is the word agape, and that agape is a, a God kind of love. It's the highest form of love. And then we see the word phileo, which is more of a really strong friendship or an affection in, 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 a, in a deep, friendly way. And then there's eros, which is more of a sexual love. Well, when we break that down and understand, and there's two of them that are going to be mentioned here today, when we look at how Jesus framed the question, it opens up a whole new dynamic of the conversation here. And so when we see this in verse 15, he says, uh, Jesus said to Simon Peter, he says, do you love me? What he's actually saying is, do you agape me? Now, as I mentioned earlier, that word agape is often referred to as a God kind of love. But if you break that down a little further, there's actually a little bit more to it. The idea of uh, that agape love is looking out for the interest of, one's being, uh, of the one being loved ahead of themselves. Let me say that again. Looking out for the interest of the one being loved ahead of themselves. And we see the greatest example of this in John 3.16, where, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, which is Jesus. He understood that if he was going to show love for mankind, the only way that mankind could be reconciled to God is if there was a holy, perfect sacrifice uh, by a man who was sinless. And, that, and, and there was nobody on earth that could do that. That's why Jesus had to be born of the Father. And he was born of the seed of God through Mary. And as a result, with him giving his life, that was the greatest act of love. Now let me ask you a question. When Jesus died on the cross, who did he do that for? He did not do that for himself. The greatest act of love that was ever committed was by Jesus, by giving himself, showing the ultimate in agape love, by looking at the interest of the one who was being loved, mankind, and putting that interest above his own, or in, in, this, in the case of Jesus, above his own life. This is a love that is beyond what normal man can do. This is something that is by the Spirit of God. And so when, when Jesus looks at Peter, what he's saying to him, let's look back at verse 15. He says, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? In other words, do you love me enough to put my interest, to put my goals ahead of your own? Now, for Peter as a mortal man, he was a guy that at one point would have said, absolutely. But the problem here is, is Peter understood that he already failed in that. And in himself, he, he thought, how can I say that? You know me so well, Lord, that I can't honestly say that. And here's Peter's response when he asks him. He says, Simon Bar Jonah, do you love me more than these? And Peter replied, yes, Lord, you know that I phileo you. Well, that's not exactly the answer we were looking for, is it? Jesus says, do you love me enough that you understand? Can you give your life for me and my cause and put your own cause, your own love for yourself aside? And Peter answers, 
Jesus, you know that I consider you a close friend. I have the deepest, warmest friendship for you. You mean a lot to me. But he wasn't willing to go to the point where he would say that I will put your interests ahead of mine because Peter already knew that he had failed in that. And then Jesus follows up and says, feed my sheep. And then verse 16, he says to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me or do you agape me? So he brings the exact same question. Do you love me in such a way that you will put my interests ahead of yours? And Peter answered him and said, Lord, you know that I phileo you. In other words, you know that I treasure you as a friend. You're a close friend. And then Jesus replies to him, tend my sheep. And then in verse 17, he said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? But this time, Jesus says, do you phileo me? In other words, do you really love me? as a close personal friend. He brought it down from, Jesus was looking for, do you love me with the highest kind of love? And then on the third time he says, do you even love me as a close personal friend? And it says here, he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I phileo you. Like a, I love you like a close personal friend. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Now, I want you to think about this. As awkward as this was, Jesus was not making this easy for Peter. He was reaffirming to Peter. There was many things that, 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 that God had revealed to Peter about who Jesus was. And, and Peter was able to embrace those things. He knew that Jesus was the Messiah. He stuck with Jesus when many left. But Peter also understood that in himself... There was a lot of things that were showing up where he wasn't as bold as he used to be. He realized that he had failed many times and B Peter's biggest problem was that he didn't trust himself. And you know, when it comes to us, again, we, when we look at our own lives, there may be some of you out, uh, out listening right now and you say, you know what? I want to love God. I want to get to the place where I will put Him before anything. Because it's very important that we understand that that is where Jesus wants to get us to. And, and, and even though it might sound like Jesus is being hard on Peter here, no, what Jesus was doing is he was showing him that there's a level of relationship that, is, that you've not yet attained, Peter, but we're about to see that is available for Peter, but Peter has to make the decision to make the transition. And the key to making that transition is making the decision that I want to love you the way you desire to be loved, Jesus. Can I do it on my own strength? Absolutely not, and I've already proven that to myself, just like many of us have already seen in our own lives. We fail miserably at times, and there might be times where you've sat and said, you know, how can I say I even love God? You know, some of the things I do, I obviously, there's times where I feel like I, I've given God my life, and, and he's, he's on the throne of my life, only to find out at times that I seem to brush him off the throne and want to sit down and take it back again. Well, you know what? Jesus knows that about us, just like he knew that about Peter. But he still makes a way for us to be able to develop a relationship where we will have an agape relationship. A relationship where we are truly putting what Jesus desires, our love for Jesus to be developed, where his, the things he desires become more important to us than the desires that we have for ourselves. So let's keep reading. He says in verse 18, after all this transpires, he says, Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wish. But when you were old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Now, the first thing that I want to point out here is that Peter was in this position where he didn't, he's like, God, I want to love you, but this is where I'm at. 
And Jesus clarifies. He says that he was showing him, uh, indicating this is an indication of what kind of death that he was going to die that would glorify God. So Jesus was saying, and Jesus predicted many things about Peter that had already come to pass. So what he was saying to Peter is he's saying, Peter, you're going to make it. You're not going to betray me. You are going to get to the place where when you finally do pass, the kind of death that you're going to die will bring glory to God. And, and so from there, the next point that I want to look at that's very important is how do we get to that point? Well, it's summed up in this, and we've talked about this a few times, but I want to make it clear that if we want to get to the place where we truly love Jesus more than we love chocolate, where we love Jesus more than we love our favorite football team, where we truly love Jesus the way that, that Jesus desires for us to love him, the kind of relationship that will bring transformation to our lives, it starts with us making the decision that we will follow him. That if we're going to accomplish everything that God has created us for, it has everything to do with giving up your life. And we see this in many portions of the gospel, but I want to look in particular at Luke 9.23 today, where it says this, If anyone desires to follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Understand that this idea of relationship with Jesus and developing a love relationship to the point where we truly love him with an agape type love. It, it starts with us understanding that the goal we have is to get our relationship to the point where we deny ourselves for his sake. We have to see that loving God and giving ourselves to him is really the key to life itself. And you will see in many places of, in scripture that this idea of walking with God daily, of relating on, on, on not just a once a week basis, you know, any good relationship, you're going to have to talk with, with your spouse more than once a week in order to keep the relationship strong. And that's just one example. If you're going to have a relationship with somebody, you're going to have to communicate. And God is the same way. So when we find ourselves in a place where you're questioning, do I really love God? Do I just look at him as, as, as somebody that's a close personal friend? And maybe I'm not giving my life the way I would really like to. Well, just keep drawing close to Jesus. Well, I hope you got something out of that today. Man, I hope you're encouraged. And with that, I'm looking forward to talking with you again tomorrow. Having said that, God bless you and have a great day.